On Wednesday afternoon, September 16th, Benedict XVI inaugurated the new premises of the Specula Vaticana, the Vatican Observatory. The Pope's astronomers moved from the Papal Palace in Castel Gondolfo, granted to them by Pius XI in 1935, to occupy a renovated monastery located in the southern end of the Castel Gondolfo villa. Luis Funes, the Argentinian Jesuit who runs the Specula, said that the new location is almost a metaphor of the observatory's mission. Though inside the church, close to the Pope, it is however on the border with the world, open to dialogue with everyone, with those who believe and those who do not. The building houses a conference room, a school area for didactic activities, the Jesuit community's residential area, as well as guest rooms to welcome scholars and researchers. In addition, the Specula's precious meteorite collection, as well as other objects such as antique telescopes and astrolabes, were also brought to the new premises. discover the famous alien ET, but it may surprise a lot of you, it did certainly surprise a lot of us, the Vatican, the Vatican is looking to the heavens for signs of life. Yes, David, 400 years after the church locked up Galileo for challenging the view that the earth was the center of the universe, the Catholic Church is exploring if life exists elsewhere in the universe, and astronomers, physicists, and priests are in Rome this week to debate the age-old question, if we are, or are we, really alone? The sky is no longer the limit for Pope Benedict XVI. Okay, He's go. become the first pontiff to call space, speaking directly with crew members on board the International Space Station. The 84-year-old had this message for the astronauts. Humanity is experiencing a period of extremely rapid progress in the face of scientific knowledge and technical applications, in a sense, you are our representatives, spearheading humanity's exploration of new spaces and possibilities for our future, going beyond the limitations of our ever everyday existence. The German pontiff was echoing the views of one of his predecessors, Pope Pius XII, who once said that God has no intention of setting a limit to the efforts of man to conquer space. The papal audience was organized by the European Space Agency. He will make return on Earth, on the Soyuz. Inside the walls of this castle, an unassuming Jesuit from Argentina leads the Vatican astronomical research and has recently caused an uproar by opening a debate about aliens. In a universe uh, so big, huge, I would say, uh, as the one where we live with a hundred billion of galaxies, with uh, each galaxy with a hundred billion of stars, uh, probably with the many of these stars uh, having planets, it could be possible that our life could evolve as the way we know on Earth. Father Funes says he is not sure if other forms of life would be more or less intelligent than humans, but he is convinced that the existence of aliens is not a contradiction with the Catholic faith. There has been no word from top Vatican officials about Funes's comments, but some people on the street find them odd. But the Vatican's chief astronomer does say that there could exist other forms of life outside Earth. And he says if they do exist, they are God's creatures. Trisha Thomas, the Associated Press, Castel Gandolfo.
Padre Balduzzi, allora, lei che cosa risponderebbe a quanti sostengono che gli alieni sono già fra di noi? Non si può più pensare è vero o non è vero, sono veri o sono falsità, ci si crede o non ci si crede, no, oramai ci sono varie considerazioni che fanno dire con certezza che l'esistenza di questi esseri c'è, non si può dubitare, magari si potrà dire che su 100 fenomeni ce ne saranno, anche se si dicesse 99 non vero e uno vero, c'è quell'uno che dice che certi fenomeni esistono. Quindi questo è il primo problema, non, è più, non rientra più nell'ambito della prudenza umana, dubitare, perché la prudenza dice di essere prudenti, ma non di negare. Con quali conseguenze sotto il profilo della religione, della filosofia? Non ci sono nessune, non c'è alcuna conseguenza negativa, tutto è contemplato, mica il Signore ci ha rivelato tutto. E quindi si può pensare benissimo, anche alla stessa redenzione umana, Cristo rimane sempre il centro dell'universo, ma nell'universo c'è tutto, quello, non solo il mondo, ma ci sono le migliaia di stelle, le migliaia di galassie e ci sono, non voglio adesso dire i numeri, ma indubbiamente si può pensare e ragionevolmente a questo punto, ed entriamo qui nella seconda questione, come si spiegano, alla esistenza di altri mondi abitati. In che maniera abitati? Da chi abitati? Vede, noi, c'è un detto che risale ancora a secoli, secoli fa, natura non facit saltus, eh? la natura non fa salti, cioè c'è il regno vegetale, il regno animale e il regno umano, e il regno angelico, le uniche cose, quattro regni che conosciamo, tre sono naturali e li vediamo. Tra l'uomo, l'essere umano e l'angelo, e c'è un salto un po' grosso da fare ecco perché già con questo argomento della convenienza che è illustrato molto bene da San Tommaso uno dei più grandi teologi è probabile e è vero simile ecco più che altro che tra l'uomo che ha già uno spirito in sé ma il povero spirito è soggetto alla materia in una maniera incredibile basta alla sera uno sente il bisogno di andare a letto mentre l'anima non ha bisogno di dormire basta una piccola malattia ma, insomma è talmente imprigionato e l'angelo che è solo spirito è vero simile che ci siano altri esseri i quali abbiano un'anima diciamo così che è meno legata meno subordinata al corpo e un'anima di questo genere è ovvio che può compiere progressi che noi per quanto ne facciamo tanti in questi ultimi decenni and I would like also to say that there is uh, uh, unfortunately today the disinformation coming from Jesuit headquarters this informa disinformation comes into being when Zaccaria Sicci meets in the year 2000 in Bellaria with Corrado Balducci Zaccaria Sicci also gets invited by the Pope, John Paul II, visits secretly the Pope in the Vatican, takes from him instructions to write his pile of rubbish, which is the end of this book that he has brought into being lately. You, you're saying Z Zachariah Sitchin was, was told to write this book and was instructed on what to write? Zachariah Sitchin was indeed instructed because he can't tell the truth. This guy is deliberately spreading this information because he can't reveal really the truth without causing problems for his cause, the Zionist cause, the cause of the Vatican, which he has uh, embraced. Are you saying that Zachariah Sitchin is a member of what? The Illuminati? Absolutely. Zachariah Sitchin is a member of the New World Order used to spread deliberate disinformation. Let's say, I want to just make you figure out how this happened. When, at the end of the 90s, uh, in the alternative media, certain information start to spread, uh, especially regarding these Anunnaki beings, call them Nephilims, call them however you want. Know. Now, what are they really? Do they really want you to know what they are? No, they want you to know what they want, you know, how the, their idea that they want to spread is something of a pre-constructed idea, which is disinformation, it's not the real thing. If you knew real, in reality what these entities were, you will not even touch them, you would just drop the other way. Well, tell us, tell us, no, tell us what is the real 
nature okay, of okay, no, but I, I tell you just a second. From your point of view. No, no, but is, it is inf it's interesting how the, the Jesuits spread this information. A Jesuit contacted uh, an Italian journalist uh, in the UFO scene and spread a certain amount of this information, including the fact that the sieve was still the greatest intelligence in the Vatican with what? With a hundred people, a couple of uh, uh, Benedictian monks, a couple of nuns and a the, the Vatican includes millions of members worldwide. They all function as intelligence from the beginning of time. They all go to confessions. The Catholics, well, they are part of an intelligence system run by the Vatican. That's how it is from the beginning of time. So they definitely don't need only one apparatus that can control. Then, if you go and study the history of the Sip, you see there is a Jesuit-based uh, film that is full of Jesuits. So, and then, on top of that, who is running the astronomic laboratories for the, Jesu uh, the, for the Vatican? The Jesuits. For example, in Mount Graham, in Arizona, nobody asks what is happening. I can tell you what is happening. I can tell you also what they are doing. Well, tell me. So, 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 people, so, so this, this information goes through and then hits uh, you know, the appropriate sources. And they can say, ah, oh, okay, there is a, a Jesuit footage of Planet X, another pile of... Oh, the biggest pile of rubbish ever could only come out of the minds of the Jesuits. Why? Because the Jesuits are very intelligent. They can figure out how to take, sorry if I say very lower, the piss out of anybody because they are really masters of deception. I work with them, I will show you some picture after of these people, but how they work is... But what is their motive for this deception? So you want to know more about the entities. Now, who is spreading this? How do they think? Zachary Asici met with Corrado Balducci. Who is Corrado Balducci? Corrado Balducci is not only the official spokesman for the UFO in the Vatican. You understand? This is, this is just the front. Who right. is he? He's okay. a demonologist. Okay. The biggest exorcist in the Vatican. Right. That should already make you think, okay, there is a connection here between the alien myth and the demonology. Mm -hmm. Now we found also that this connection is very much alive when most of the people who have spread the disinformation regarding the alien beings have been from the time of Alistair Crowley, his followings, following of followers of Hubbard or whatever. But the people that have been deliberately spreading this information, but to a certain extent, Hubbard knew the truth as well as Crowley, because they said themselves. I mean, it was Crowley who said, "You call them gods, then we call them angels." In 50 years, we will call them something else. He showed the image of the lamb, which was the first image resembling an alien being. This is genies. In Islam, we call them genies. Genies. But by any other name, what are we talking about? We're talking about okay, yeah, spirits. We're exactly. talking about a demon is nothing other than a spirit being, a being you know uh, who is perhaps not incorporated in the material world. No, it can be it can, it can incorporate. The thing is that there is a certain degree of misconception. Okay, let me tell you exactly what are these UFOs. UFO unidentified, unidentified beings, okay, or, or objects that fly around. Either they are military. A stealth operations which can't be disclosed, or either they are operations regarding the evocation of genies coming from other dimensions. So, an interdimensional door is created, is opened up. Where can these interdimensional doors can be opened up? In certain spaces, certain places, certain holy ground from ancient times known to possess that that that's possibility. For, for example, a purpose. For a example, in Iraq. For example, no, just go to Mount Graham and study a bit what the Jesuits are doing up there. There is a war between the, the American natives, Indians, and the Jesuits since the Jesuits have tried to build this observatory. And why is that? Because the Indians have used that uh, mountain as holy ground for thousands of years, and there is a specific entity living on top of that mountain but on another dimension. When he wants, he can be called upon this dimension.